Welcome to Clone Questions Live, episode 14, with Paul, your clone coach. That's me. Welcome, welcome to another edition, another series. We're, we're doing this every Friday, 5.30 p.m. Pacific, and we're live on Instagram as well. So if you're re-watching this on YouTube, join live, follow me on Instagram at Clone Coach, and you can join the live chat and get your questions submitted right on here. You could even request, as a reminder for everybody joining, you could request to join um, the live on here on Instagram to ask your question that way. You'll, you'll obviously be live for everybody else to see, just FYI. But uh, it was a really cool experience. It's happened a couple times and, you know, I was much appreciated and it just added another really cool element to, to the whole show. So, but if you're just joining, like always, everybody, let us know where you're joining in from. Let's, let's see where that, where that clone coach team is at throughout the world. We got some pretty cool, pretty cool places pop up usually. Costa Rica, New Zealand, Germany, uh, Canada, up and down California, left and right across the states, everywhere. But it's really, really cool to see where everybody's kind of tuning in from. Because everybody's, you know, uh, market's a little bit different, right? Hopefully expanding, growing, and getting, you know, becoming for the better, but different nonetheless. So it's always cool to hear everybody's uh, own own viewpoints on it. But as a little reminder here for every show, we do a giveaway um, in the chat. So let me put a little reminder there. Pick a number between 1 and 420. And to enter your chance to win... Uh, free SOP right here in the chat. So at the end of the show, we go through all of the, the, um, pin that comment there. We go through all of the, the comments here in the chat and we find our winner. Um, not only that, we got a special going on at clonecoach.com. Buy one, get one 50% off the SOPs and a little secret. The other discount code that I that I give out the 15k for 50 bucks off, you could use that as well. So you, you could use both discount codes at clonecoachtalk.com. So a little a little hack for you there, um, if you're on the fence about joining the team here. That and some other exciting news. We got some gel samples that we're gonna begin trials on. Let me get it in this camera. Don't spill. Don't spill. We got a little bit of gel sample there. Get it over here, gel sample. We're gonna come out with, we're gonna do a little trial on some uh, some different gel samples and see which one's gonna end up being the Clone Coach rooting gel. What do you guys think about that? Me personally, stoked. So stoked, so stoked. This is, uh, you know, making literal dreams come true for me, man. It's, 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 this is really, really cool. But, uh, you know, I, I like to take some risks sometimes, and this is a, a business risk, a calculated one, you know. But uh, all the feedback that I've gotten from everybody has been really, really positive. Um, so I really, you guys give me the confidence to, to continue on this clone coach path that I started on. Um, you know, this has really taken off. I've really only been making videos for about six months consistently, right? Like the end of summer last year. But the 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 traction has been tremendous. The tangible value that people are are getting and receiving from the content is tremendous, and I'm so I'm doubling down. I'm doubling down in every which way I can with with Clone Coach. So thanks to you guys, I appreciate it. Appreciate all the support. See, we got here. We got um, Thailand, New Brunswick, Canada. I assume that's New Brunswick since that's NB Canada. We got Pahrump. Pahrump, Nevada, it's like Connecticut, Maryland, Vernon, Canada, head of cultivation for a legal nursery, great white bud, I've been following you forever, great white bud, thanks for joining, man, head of a cultivation for a legal nursery, you know, hopefully some clone coach tech makes its way through that nursery and, you know, helps, helps out if, if possible. Awesome to have you here, let's keep going, we got Brazil, Brazil in the house, Welcome back, Cyclone Cannabis Co. Welcome back. 
Let me make my way to the chat. Have you guys got any questions for, for clone coach nursery operations? Um, last episode, if you didn't catch it last episode, we dove into a little bit about like the, my, my story on how I, you know, left my previous career and replaced my salary with, with a nursery, with a small nursery. Um, that was actually in this bedroom here. Um, if you didn't catch that, go back to that other episode, episode 13 to catch that, um, a little bit more in depth story, but let's see here. Let's scroll down. I forgot where I was going with that thought, but, uh, Great White Bud says powder versus gel. I would say gel. Um, powder, the only downside with powder is the potential risk with, um, you know, lack of PPE and, and, and somebody inhaling the, the dust or anything like that. Like the handling of it and the potential dust, like I said, potential, you know, the risk is always have a certain level of, of what's possible. Um, that's my only concern or, or reason why. Um, you know, I would go away from, from powder, but you know, so, and I, I just, I just preference gel. It's cooler. You could use it a lot of different ways. You could dip it. You could, you could put it into the hole, uh, ahead of time. You, it's easily for, you know, to top off and stuff. I don't know. I've always just used gel and, uh, I love it. And the clone coach rooting, rooting product will be a gel for sure. And I'm going to try to go, I'm going to go direct direct to consumer with the gel and whatever ideally whatever branded products I'm coming out with direct to consumer so that I could pass on the customer experience with the shopping and, and the ordering process and everything um, that customer service and the pricing really try to give you the best bang for your buck I know times are tough right now you know we're, we're the industry is barely kind of scraping out of you know this this crazy time that we went through and, and times are tough and and you really got to be on it about what where your dollars are going. So I'm going to do my best to provide a product that provides you the best value for your dollar um, in every way possible. Um, once again, that's in addition to the content and um, SOPs. And I'm going to build in discounts and free shipping for, for team members. I'm really, you know, if you guys have gotten a sense of what I've been doing, I really try to beef it up and put my best foot forward for you guys to have a, a good experience. So uh, just... Uh, just a little insight there. But we got Oklahoma, Bisbee, Arizona, Kansas City, Missouri, Huntington Beach. Nice. See, we got Allen up north saying, thanks for all the free advice. I really appreciate you helping me so much. Shout out from upstate New York. Nice. Owen Grows, what's going on? How are you guys? Let's see, what, And if you guys haven't caught the... I just dropped a um, a tour video today on my YouTube channel. If you guys haven't checked out my YouTube channel, please go. I'm really starting to put more effort there. All the full length episodes of Clone Questions Live are on my uh, YouTube channel. Um, but I just dropped the first the first tour um, that I've done so far that I recorded and edited and, and put out there. And I, you know, if you didn't know, I mean, I've really been trying to come out with a little series, a little video series, a little tour series of me checking out different nurseries and checking out different operations. And uh, this is the first one that I got under my belt. And, you know, it's the first one, so I could only get better from here. But uh, it's a pretty, pretty exciting day. So go check that out on my YouTube channel. It's um, Hemp Nursery Farm, uh, Hemp Farm out here in Thermo, California. Orso Farms is the name of it. And we did a tour there. It's still a little early in the season, so I'm going to be doing a series with it where I'm going to be going back and checking out, you know, when they do their next set of propagation, which is going to be like 10, 20,000 clones, if I'm not mistaken. I think 40 in total for this batch, 40,000 clones. Um, when their four-acre uh, canopy of hemp is ready to harvest, we're going to get there and check out those colas. So we're going to go through the season here and, um, you know, at doing some tours, some series in, at Orso Farms. So check that out on, uh, on YouTube whenever you get a chance. Let's see here. We got a question. Cal V says, how do you deal with mold? How do I prevent and deal with it? Um, prevent it, you know, by staying clean, making sure your plants are at optimal health because the healthier the plant, the better it's going to be resistant against mold. Um, and that's in every sense the root zone, you know, the, you know, a lot of oxygen in the root zone to keep that, that, that root zone happy. We don't want, you know, stagnant water there dead water um 
preventative pre preventative sprays like zero tall 2.0 um keeps things at bay um you know all the other different types of fungicides and biofungicides biofungicides are a really good one that you could use more often and um they just build up the natural defenses in your plant as well so you deal with mold you can either deal with it chemically if you have an issue you deal with it chemically and you come back in with biologicals um, and you're doing that throughout the entire plant's life to keep it as healthy as you can um, you know obviously assuming you know your environment isn't swinging you know more than 10 15 degrees or or um, humidity points you know daily big swings in humidity and temperature are gonna be ripe for your um, canopy to suffer with, with, some, with some mold or if you have a really cold air handler blowing on your canopy when your room's 80 degrees and your lights are on it, but like the, the surface of the temperature, the surface of the leaf is really, really cold from the AC hitting it. Little nuances like that. Um, but deal with mold chemically and, and procedurally and, you know, biologically. Let's see here. What's going on, Orso Farms? Let's see, what's the difference between your gel and Clonex? California Alchemy. What's the difference between your gel and Clonex? It's going to be about 10% 10, 10 stronger, about 20% cheaper in cost to you. Um, it's going to be, can't give everything, but it's going to be packaged in a way to, to aid in the, the, the preventing contamination of the product itself. Because that's one big factor that you'll see on every clone gel product. You know, they don't want that to get contaminated. And it's such a big opening and it gets reused and reopened all the time. So contamination is bound to happen. So a way to prevent that uh, contamination on the product. And um, I, those are the three three main ones. And lastly, you know, Clonex is, is a UK-based company. And me, I'm, you know, a veteran in the cannabis industry and I'm part of the community. And I'm, and I'm trying to do my part to bring a, a product to, to everybody. So I guess those those are the biggest, biggest differences there. 10% stronger, 20% cheaper, um, made by me, uh, you know, packaged here in the United States and things like that and distributed by, you know, me and um, packaged in a way to prevent contamination on the product. Alan up north says, you think the gel should be thicker? Clonix seems to be slimy and not a gel. Um, you know, it all depends. I think I was talking to someone earlier today that said, you know, saying their, their Clonex got slimy, but in talking to them, they were contaminating the, the solution or, you know, with, with moisture from like wet stems and stuff. So it got slimy that way. Um, you know, uh, thicker, like, like the Clonex, uh, like the Athena cuts gels, like I think is a bit thicker. It's like, it clings a bit more. Um, so it's decent. It will be leaning towards that more so than, than the Clonex gel. Let's see here. That joint Michigan, that joint Michigan, my, what does that say? Uh, it says rock wool or root riots. For a simple answer, I'm going to say root riots. Um, rock wool requires a, a bit more um, inputs and, and adjustment with the ph and the buffering of the media, the pre-soaking and stuff. And root riots are just a simple cocoa, you know, peat-based type of media um spongy and in you know and it's in its form so it holds its shape and a really great oxygen to moisture ratio which allows really fast rooting so it's really easy to use um root rights let's see here jai jai's jinzo 28 25 says any beneficial you recommend for daily clone watering? No, not daily with the beneficials because they last a, a, an easy week. Excuse me. They last an easy week. So, you know, I'm, whenever I'm watering in veg or whatever stage, it's, it's once a week for the beneficials. So most beneficials last a week. If you're doing any sooner than that or more often than that, you're just running through a lot more beneficials. Let's see here. Cal V says, which is spelled C C A A L L V V. 
Calv, something, uh, says, what am I doing wrong if my clones are green the first seven days and then it turns yellow and wilts? Thank you, clone coach. I love you. <laughs> I appreciate you. Appreciate the love. This is such a common, this was such a common trait in most people's clone production. That first week, that, that, that stem could last a week, you know, with through most things. But after that, if you're not, if, if that plant doesn't have what it needs, it's going to suffer a big deficiency from uh, day seven to day 10, that day nine sweet spot where everything turns yellow, you know, used to turn yellow. Um, that's addressed in the beginning of the, the rooting process. So, you know, I have all that step-by-step -step procedure and protocols and what to do to prevent that even on the mother plants. So you have the same consistent growth as you had on your mother plants throughout the rooting process. So if your plants are suffering any sort of dip in deficiency throughout the rooting process, it could be solved. I got the solution for you. Head on over to clonecoach.com. Let's see here. Let's see here. What do we got? Scrolling down the chat. So if I haven't gotten to your comment yet, just bear with me. I'm, I'm trying to keep up from the beginning so I don't lose out on anything. So I'm scrolling through. We got a question here. Let's see. Corey ETH say, ETH says, are you knowledgeable on opening a cannabis nursery in California? That's a great question, Corey. Let me tell you a little story. 2018 comes around. January 2018. And most people in the industry, like myself, were at this fork in the road. Right. 2018 meant Prop 64 laws were were taking effect and the quote unquote, you know, medical market was going away. You had to kind of pick which lane. So when that kind of fork in the road came, I was providing clones to a, a legal operation um, for their opening set of plants. Um, and I joined their team as one of their, you know, first handful of employees. I joined their team very, very early on with the ambition to sell licensed clones, sell licensed clones, bring a licensed nursery to, to market. Um, that was the goal. That was the goal in my head the entire time. That was a strategy. So I got in, put in the work, hung lights, plumbing, tables, plants, transplanting, weekends, early days, put in the work of a startup, of a startup, of a startup grow. All the headaches and the, and the struggles, every mistake made. I mean, I, yeah, put in put in the dues, right? But there was a there was an extra room in the expansion to phase two of their project. There was an extra room, and uh, I kind of weaselled my way into convincing them to grab to to apply for a nursery license and turn that we could turn that room into a nursery, headed by me, right? I'll build it, I'll design it, I'll run it, I'll sell them the whole the whole nine. Just give me the space get the license and let me, I'll do the rest. That's exactly what happened. Uh, you know, so I wasn't through like the licensing process, you know, obviously you always want to have a professional involved when it comes to that kind of stuff. But I understood what was, what to do, what we needed. You know, I was part of the process of what the state was saying, you know, the opening the door, the access areas, things like that. Um, but we brought a nursery to market and I turned this thousand square foot room. I designed it. I hung up, Ceramic going to highlight lights, pallet racks, cocoa, 70, 30% cocoa, got to work, trailing, you know, hauling water to and from. But I grabbed clones, brought them to this nursery, you know, filled it out. And before the end of that same year, right around my birthday in December, I had launched, built, grow, grew and cut and produced and now sold clones in the license market in California. That was December, 2018. And once again, I took that spare room and I weaseled my way in and, and convinced them and started selling clones in a licensed market, you know, and that, and that's that same year. And, uh, that was phenomenal, a phenomenal experience. So yeah, I do got a little bit of experience with California licensed nurseries, both operating them, um, Working with them, I, I brokered a lot of clones for a lot of other nurseries and was a salesman for, for a dark heart nursery for a while. Um, 
I understand the clone business, you know, as much as, as much as anybody that's been exposed to it as much as I have would be. So I got a little bit of experience there. And um, yeah, man, great question, Corey. I really appreciate that. That was a good one. Let's see here. Loud THC Organics. Respect, man. What do you suggest for preventative for mold? Zero tall 2.0 chemically um, followed up with uh, biofungicides like C, sectinovate, regalia um, on the foliage. Um, same thing in the root zone, maintaining a high level of bi uh, biofungicides and biologicals to maintain, you know, health is number one on the plants. Um, and if something does break out, you know, you could do some... Uh, some some IPM from Athena. You could rotate in Regalia. You could rotate in um, things like high pH, like um, some some oils. Some uh, what else? Uh, so by bicarbonate powders. A lot of high pH um, items. If you go sulfur, what I don't like about sulfur is that you it coats for so long and it limits what else you could rotate in during that time. But it's effective, you know. So it's it's I, if you stay away from sulfur, in my opinion, you have a lot more options to rotate through your process to try to address an issue. If you go with sulfur, it's it's you're putting all your eggs in that basket. Um, but that should be some generals there for you. J Day says, any advice for aero cloners? I got a little bit of advice. Go to my profile uh, under series. You'll find um, uh, an aero cloner series there where I got some some bullet point videos there for you. Let's see here. Let me uh, let me go through the chat here. Catching up on all the chat. I appreciate everybody entering uh, the chat and letting us know where you're joining in from and uh, entering your guests there for the giveaway. And uh, if you haven't checked out the YouTube channel, please do check out the YouTube channel and check out that latest tour I just dropped today. And if you're puffing on something, let us know where you're puffing on and where you're puffing on it at. Cal, Cal V says, am I pronouncing that right? Uh, C-C-A-A-L-L-V-V. -V. Am I pronouncing that how you, you know, wanted it to be pronounced? Let me know. Uh, but they say, how do we buy and buy in bulk of your gel? I'm going to be off. I'm going to be offering gallons um, as a size. So if you, uh, is that what you assume by, by bulk is a gallon or a gallon or more? Or are you saying more than four gallons? Because I'll be able to handle the gallons and the smaller sizes, which would be about eight ounces, pretty standard size, eight ounce uh, size, and then like a refillable option to the bulk gallon. Alan up north says, I'll take a jar ASAP, getting more serious about starting my small scale nursery. See, Alan up north is inspired to start their own nursery, just like I was inspired to start my own nursery years ago in this spare bedroom. And it changed my life. It replaced my salary. It allowed me to take the these risks and opportunities and these and these um, adventures to pursue what I was really really passionate about, you know. So clones really and and it led me to here, which is phenomenal. And I'm helping other people do it. So clones clones changed my life. And you know, if you go down that that path, I think it'll it'll affect yours too. Let's see here. Scrolling down the chat. says, thank you for answering my question. Good info. Thank you. Mace joined. What's going on, Mace? I'm not sure if you're still here. I'm scrolling through the chat, making my way through here. Underhill, Big Dog says, can you follow me back? Uh, no. Appreciate the game from Corey. Appreciate you. So we got a question here. From Kadon Velasco. Velasco says... Should I be doing a foliar spray feedings within the first 36 to 48 hours after I plug my clones? Currently, I do a spray on the clones right after I plug my cubes and then immediately put the dome on. So question about when to, when to do your foliar sprays, your feedings, which is basically a kelp or a compost tea or a little calcium boost, a little nitrogen boost, any sort of little micro deficiency uh, correction there a little a little light feeding through a foliar spray when to do that i do that 
on my mother stock prior to cloning them. And ideally, a few days prior to cloning them. Because I, I feel it's better to have that fertilizer, you know, enter the plant, and allow the plant to kind of build up a little reserve of it and start moving it through its, its, its tissue, through all the cells, um, prior to that cloning. So that's already active in that stage. So my first spray would be on the mother stock previous to cutting, prior to cutting. Um, during the rooting process, I think you're spot on. I mean, one, I wouldn't do more than two sprays throughout the entire 14 days of the rooting process. I think that's just, you know, too much. Generally, feeding sprays are once a week. So if you maintain that same schedule, I think it's best for consistency and uh, that plant knows what to expect. You're not interrupting its growth cycle. Um, if you keep everything the same and it knows what to expect every single week kind of develops this timing on it. So I would just say, do your folders once a week, no matter if it's in veg, mother plant or going through a rooting process. Good question there. Appreciate that. What's going on, Ned? Got some, some people that I know. What's up, brother? Ned says it's Ned city says, what's up, man? We're always down to test, brother. I love it. I love it. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get some gel going. Shoot your DM, man. I got some Joe to get you a small sample here. Um, and then we're going to move forward with the, with the bigger ones. No, Ned, for a long time out here in this desert. I appreciate you, man. We're both. I see you out there killing it. Killing it. Putting in the work. Putting in the grind. Making, you know, killer rooms happen. Troy Holland, 1048, says, What's the best medium to use? The best cloning medium to use is one that is the same as the media that you're going to continue the plant's growth cycle in. Whatever you're going to transplant into and whatever you're going to flower into, make your cloning media match that. That is my best um, suggestion there for you. If you're going to Rockwool, start with Rockwool. If you're going to Coco, start with the Coco. If you're going uh, DWC or Aeroponics, start with the Aeroponics. That's my, that's my preference for you. Good question there. The broker, the broke toker says, I've had a thankfully high success rate with cloning since the start. Nice. Congratulations. And, you know, rooting is only one part. Once again, you know, that, that foliage and the momentum that it has throughout the process, I believe, in my opinion, is the other, is the other portion of that. Broke toker says, I like peat plugs. I like cocoa peat plugs. I like cocoa peat plugs. They're they're real. They're natural. They break down. You know, they're they're really safe and organic. Mostly, it's like it's it's the best nice medium to use um, versus you know spun rock. iMac O six says, "What's your preferred media product for cloning? How many per tray? I like a cocoa peat based medium. Fifty per tray makes my life pretty easy. Um, if I'm doing if I have less space but more production, I'm going to go to 72 per tray. That's really my only two options. If I'm, if I'm doing some micro clones, some shorties, some little offshoots, one or two inches tall, maybe I'll go to a 98. But my standard go-to is 50 per tray on a, with a Cocoa Peat Base Media. Ned Denver says, cheers to everybody. Unknown Farm says, do you need to IPM? 100%. Cultivating cannabis successfully in an indoor environment or any environment with, the, with, with some sort of fixture structure, the majority of what you're doing is trying to keep pests and disease away from your plants because they're out there trying to get your plants. So if you're not doing any sort of IPM strategy protocols, it's not on the top of your list daily, basically then you're going to probably suffer some pressure from either pests or disease. So, yeah, IPM is, is vital to a successful operation. It's Ned City says, thank you, my man. We use Hormix number three right now, but always looking to improve. That's fantastic. Um, Hormix number three, I, I, I was researching that. And I want is that the point eight? concentration of the IBA or the, or the 0.4 or 5 on that Hormix 3. I think it was pretty pretty high. Made for like more like semi-hardwood 
uh, woody cuttings, if I'm not mistaken. Ned Denver says, have you ever tried the Floorflex foam plugs? I got sent a, a slab of them, but I, I didn't I didn't put them to use. But I've tried foam before. I've tried Oasis uh, Floral Foam um, years ago and had success with it. And, and you know, to, took out the slab and did the whole slab at once. So there was no breaking down of any cubes. Um, but I've definitely used foam before. Just not the uh, Floorflex brand. Dogs are dogs are barking at something. One day I won't be recording where there's dogs, so we don't get any interruptions like that. But for now, that's the reality. Deep grow, deep growth media says, cloning advice for living soil medium. I do have a little bit of advice for you, as far as what to use as a cloning medium when your mother plants are grown in living soil. I say get an empty cell tray and gather some of that living soil that the plants are already growing in and compact that into the cell tray and root your cuttings in that same media. Why? Because the same theory applies. Once the plant roots, we want to have the same exact nutrients and food that it was receiving previously so we know so that plant doesn't skip a beat in its growth and its in its foliage development. So same theory applies. If it's, if it was thriving with that living soil, um, as soon as it roots, it, it want you give it the same living soil. If you do that, I think that's your best odds of maintaining the same growth without having to um, introduce any sort of additional nutrients. Assuming that living soil has everything the plant, all the things that a plant needs in that living soil is bioavailable. That's the assumption. Good question. Deep growth media, I like that. Kaden Velasco says, you talked about rotating different IPM sprays. I have heard that using multiple IPM sprays can increase the chance of clogging the somata and slowing growth. What are your thoughts? I don't believe the chemistry in the IPM products, because there's a rotation of chemistry, is going to cause your plants to slow their growth and have a chemical effect on stomata. I think stomata is more determined by the plant actually transpiring and breathing. Um, you know, and it's on a bot. you know, I don't believe that the rotation of multiple sprays is going to cause slowing growth. No. Um, if your procedural procedures on the sprays and the environment stuff aren't in line, that will cause slower growth faster than you actually just rotating products. So if that's the case, I wouldn't focus on the chemistry. Um, I would focus on procedures and, and other aspects. Strong Style Organic says, what's up to everybody? Ned City says, I can't remember off the top of my head, but we do a pretty decent, usually have roots within 10 days and ready to transplant in 14. That's money, That's what we. that's what you need right there. Alan up north says, "What do you think about perlite in the bottom of trays?" Sod on the university YouTube. I have a little bit of history with perlite on the bottom of trays. When I ran Oasis cubes, it had the full slab, right? But the bottom, like that cube, if you have a side angle of it, the top half is like indented, so like it shapes the cubes. But the bottom half is solid. It's a solid piece of foam. So if you just put that on plastic, you have no, the roots don't, don't have anywhere to go. So what I would do is put a layer of perlite in that plastic tray with holes and put my slab of oasis on top of that. So when my roots struck, they had another, uh, you know, half inch of medium, uh, you know, good air to moisture ratio medium to continue growth. And when I was providing those clones to dispensaries and they had to sit on the shelf for a week on the retail shelf, that helped me um, help the plants have a little bit more extra space to continue growing and keep those roots, um, you know, fresher and brighter versus just kind of dying out once they hit plastic and, and air prune themselves. Good question there, Alan up north. I've, I've noticed your, your support lately and I appreciate you. doesn't go unnoticed, just so you know. Um, 
Let's see here. Officer Perp says, what is a solid root rate out of a thousand cuts in two weeks? 95% or more. And excuse me, that's like with a cutoff of, of 14 days. If you took that 10, five, 10% of loss and, and waited another few days, I'm sure you would get the majority of those as well. So, you know, as close to a hundred as possible, really nothing's a hundred percent. Um, but assuming, you know, everything's right in line as close to a hundred percent as possible. Empathy Cannabis says the best EC for non-rooted clones. The same EC as they were getting before. Let's see here. Concrete Jungle CA says if you're using both Rockwool and Cocoa Perlite, what do you think is a best neutral medium to clone in? How are you using Rockwool? What's the setup? You have like a four inch Rockwool cube and you're putting that into some Cocoa Perlite. Is that what you're saying? If that's the case, then start with Rockwool clones and go into a Rockwool cube because you're already going to change it in the future anyways. Um, yeah. So if you're already mixing things, it doesn't really matter. You're just going to mix something else in at, at the end of it. The Smokin Muskokin says, I just tried that with living soil. Fingers crossed. Exclamation point. Love it. The Broke Toker says, the only downside in my opinion is that using loose media requires more dome time because if they aren't fully rooted, your media starts to fall apart. With peat plugs, I find I can remove them from the, from the dome with lower root development and get them into the main environment, thus lowering my risk of any issues the domes bring, if that makes sense. It does make sense, the Broke Toker, but... I've cloned when when you have loose media in a, in a cell tray, you're going to compact it obviously to to have that same type of you know cube that you have in a in a um, kind of a cube that already has some some polymers and hold that hold its shape together. Yeah, because even in the in the cocoa peat based ones with some polymers that hold their shape, if there's no root zone, they'll break apart some of them. The ones that aren't spongy and foamy. Um, but it doesn't require more time. You just got to have the right air to, to moisture ratio in that root zone, in that media, with the right temperatures at that root zone, the right drybacks in the foliage. And with that, the clones will search for moisture. We need that moisture to dry back from that media, no matter what it is. So if anything is prolonging that dryback and those roots to really expand and, and use up all of that media by day 12, 13, 14, then increase your temperature, decrease your humidity up top, and, and you got to find that right ratio um, because it's it's 100% possible with, with loose media. I've done it with cocoa and other ones just compacting it. Um, like I say, in most things, the other factors are more important in the whole thing than, than that one piece. There's a lot of pieces involved, you know, but they don't all share the same size of the pie, if that makes sense. Thanks for Thanks for that question there. Deep Growth Media says, damn, I missed my question. I forgot your question, man. Put it in again. <laughs> um, let's see here. The 420 dude says, that's great info. I just switched to living soil recently. And, and yeah, and, and how the Broke Turker said, if you're just compacting your soil or any loose media into a cell tray, it doesn't have what cloning media has, which is those are, those are additional polymers to hold their shape. Depending on, on how much polymer... It either doesn't break apart, like real spongy, like a root riot, or it can break apart, um, but it still holds its shape to a degree. Your loose soil doesn't have that polymer built in, so hence the extra compacting and forming when you fill it to the cell. And if it, you don't have a full root zone, yeah, it's going to fall apart. Um, it's not going to hold its shape as it would in any other situation. So I like that. Good, 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 good. Um, Good touches on that subject of, of using loose media, you know, you know, usually living soil to root the clones in into the cell trays. I like that little that little uh, segment there. Let me scroll down the chat here. If you if you're still joined, let us know where you're joining in from. We are going to and let us know and enter your. I see a bunch of guesses here in the chat, so I loved it. 
I love it. I'm going to go through that at the end of the episode here. You actually caught Clone Coach having a, a, a drink because uh, celebrating the, the, the upload of my tour, you know, that was a, uh, it's a milestone for me, be it a small one, but it, it's kicking off the path that, that, that I have laid out. So it's the first of many. So I'm, I'm having a little celebration there. Let's see here. Sheldon Lipschutz says, hey, clone coach, hope you're doing well, man. I am. Thank you, Sheldon. I appreciate that. Mount Baker Garden says, do you mix, do you mix and pesticides to your, as a, me see, do you mix your pesticides to your zero tall dunk mixture for your snips before you plug into the root plugs? I do. I do do a, a zero tall dunk um, before I go into the root plugs, uh, before I plug them, uh, before I plug my stems. There's a lot of words we could use in a, you know, interchange in that sentence there. Um, I do that. I don't usually do any sort of um, like insecticide. It's usually a fungicide, like a zero tall two point oh, combined with a little oxyphos. Um, you could add in uh, as a garden there as well because the chemistries work well together. Um, but the residual is very very nil once it dries up. So that's why I like using that as well. Something that doesn't really have a high residual. I, I you know if you do something that has a high residual because you do have pressure, just monitor. Monitor and make sure that that res residue from whatever pesticide application you dunked with doesn't have any uh, lingering effects to the bottom of your stem, to the foliage, to the light, to the extra humidity, um, any of those factors. Good question there, Mount Baker Gardens. Let's see here. Uh, why, Ra why Ravi says... I have a question. Have you ever tried to make clones using cured stems off of buds? I don't think it would, but you ever thought about it? <laughs> Not cured stems. Because uh, a cured stem of bud is a, is a dry, dead stem of, of bud. So there's nothing living in there. So I wouldn't try to clone that. But people clone um, flowering plants, you know, whenever necessary. Um, you know, that's possible. It's just the buds are susceptible to high moisture, obviously. So that's the only the only thing there. But I haven't tried the, the dried and cured stems. Let's see here. Thanks for all the questions, guys. I really appreciate it. And um, as a reminder, if you guys have not joined the team, clonecoach.com, grabbing the SOPs, the clones SOPs, and the mother plant SOPs. There's a buy one, get one special right now, 50% off. Buy one, get one, 50% off at clonecoach.com. And you could double up on the discount codes and use discount code 15K for another 50 bucks off. Join the team today, and like I said, the, I'm, I'm building up supplies for the team, right? The team is building, hence here comes the clone gel. Direct to the, direct to the team first, um, big, custom, big on the customer experience and stuff, so free shipping for team members, things like that. The team is going to get bigger, and the team is going to get stronger with the more support, and you're going to be involved because you are the team. So join the team today and come along for the journey, and let's, let's make, start making... The best clones ever as the new standard. That's just a staple and a standard. And what that could do for your gardens out there. You, you, you could just imagine. Let's see here. IMAX says, how to get excess moisture out of cubes. Fairly easy. Increase the temperature at the root zone and decrease the, the uh, humidity um, on the foliage area. You want to have that warmth and a little bit of dryness and breathing to decrease that um, moisture out of the cubes. Doing so will encourage the root growth. Root growth. So once there's roots in there, that'll be the bigger portion along with the other two factors to dry out your cubes. So the less cubes, you're going to have to rely more on temperature and humidity levels. And the more, the more roots, the less you rely on the other two to get a dry back. Let's see here. Scrolling through. Tuper599 says 3.5 the best at soaking cubes. 3.5 EC the best at soaking cubes. That's high up there, man. You know, but with running LEDs, I feel like anybody that say they're above 3.0, they're probably running LEDs in my, in my experience. 
And call me old school. I think that's why I'm I'm still I've tried the LEDs and I've ran them and made them work, but I really like the ceramic metal highlights. And I mean, that's my favorite light for for mother plants and for veg. You know, never had to, you know, increase the nutrient levels to that amount and things like that and always got amazing growth out of my plants under CMH. So, I don't know. That's that's my my preferred lighting there. Let's see here. Sheldon Lipschitz says, what percent overage of clones do you usually take for commercial purposes? Ten percent? I mean if you're if if you know the nursery, you know what to expect, there should be a no more than ten percent swing, assuming everything's hidden on all cylinders. If you know you have an issue or you know you have a strain that doesn't root as well historically, you have to factor that in. So, and once again, all of the consistencies and the procedures and everything else will ensure that that average is as high in the 90s as possible. But, you know, if, you, if, if you're giving yourself more than 10%, it's because you know you, there's a reason to expect a, that bigger loss. Let's see here. We got New Jersey. Sheldon, just for that question there is from New Jersey. Indiana. Washington State, Massachusetts, Connecticut. We got we got a couple Connecticut's. Let's see here. Congrats, congrats. Let's see. Shout out to CT Original Strain Vulcan Mindfuck. Hmm. Let's see here. Beautiful Disaster says, "What's your recommendation on clone lights?" Pretty easy. Four foot LED strip uh light that's in a cool blue spectrum usually like a 4200 kelvin uh 4200k you know hovers around 20 watts give or take per per strip light uh four foot strip light a couple of those over some over four domes that's always worked for me you could increase that if you have higher space up top like more of a, a gap and vertical gap or you got more coverage, or you want to get more veg out of them once the domes come off and stuff. Um, so, but usually that does it. Let's see here. The 420 dude says, wondering if lactic acid bacteria or similar for foliar is safe for the clones. I don't know. What are you trying to accomplish, the 420 dude, by spraying that? What are, you, what, are you, what are you trying to accomplish there? Deep Growth Media says pinned website. Clonecoach.com is a website. Only real website. You got to know right now. I'm trying to drive everything to clonecoach.com. Let's see. Alan Up North says, yep, 18 watt, cool blue LED strip, four foot in length. Yep, I already know it. Love it. Alan Up North, you're paying attention. I see you picking it up. Strong Style Organic says... You recommend not be closing your dome vents all the all the easy. I don't close my vents all the way, if that's what you mean. Um, I don't close them all the way ever, ever, ever. Let's see here. The smoking Muskokin says I use the old clamp lights from Canadian Tire for cloning, but they work great. I, I figured that. The smoking Muskokin. I knew, I knew that was Canadian. And Canadian Tire is like the, the Lowe's Home Depot up there. Indio 933 says Clone Coach. Or Clone Coach. A lot of H's. Let's see here. Greetings from Spain. Salute from Spain. That's awesome. I love it. Berlin, Michigan. We got Canada, we got a little bit of Europe, we got some Spain, we got some Berlin. Canada is always, always, always representing. I love it. Canada is always representing. A lot of people across the states. We got Guam. What's going on in Guam? I, I got a, another client out there, another team member out there in Guam. And uh, super interesting, super interesting. I mean, nobody really pays attention to Guam, I guess, but it's uh, it's out there. And there's there's hydro stores and there's hydro stuff going on out there in Guam. So it's crazy. That's pretty cool. Mo Buddy the Hash Heathen says, What up, bud? What's going on? What's going on? Oops. Oops. 
Indio says, do you ever foliar fresh clones with roots? Do you ever foliar fresh clones without roots? He corrected there. Um, I mentioned that earlier in the live here, but I usually like to spray my moms prior to cloning. Um, and I'm not doing any real foliar sprays during the rooting process. If I did maximum once a week, really keep that same schedule that the mother plants were receiving as well with usually once a week feedings on the foliar on the foliage. Let's see here. 422 said IPM for the most part, as I understand, but I believe there's some uptake benefits as well. I'm not hundred percent clear. Go with a chemical or a chemistry or a product that you are hundred percent clear on and have no questions when you go going to spray your plants. If not, then understand it's R and D and you can spray something and you will be the one to know what happened to your plants. So track that and find out. So it depends. It's up to you, man, what you, what you want to, how much you want to risk your plants there, but, uh, you know, try it and, and find out. Let's see here. We got South Dakota. Let's see here. Let's see here. Your boy TK says, what are your thoughts on easy cloner or water coolers? Water coolers I'm familiar with because I live in a desert and where the water gets stored, it's usually, you know, hot and you got to find a way to cool that water during the summertime. So water coolers as necessary to maintain a good, a good temperature and um, a level that could hold a temperature that could hold um, oxygen better. But uh, easy cloners, like I mentioned before, you, you could get f faster rooting there. I think that air to water ratio, you know works out really well and you get faster rooting, but you have no media. The clone has no media to sustain itself in. So ideally, in my opinion, if you're using turbo cloners or easy cloners or aeroponic cloning, you're going to the same type of growth medium in the next stage, be it DWC or aeroponics as well. So if you're going to continue on that growth, I say start in that way. If not, you know, it's not impossible. You can put, plant that into some loose media, loose little, you know, solo cup or half gallon or something into some loose media and like, Make sure it stays nice and sturdy. Let's see here. Water cloners. I hope that answers your question there, your boy TK. Let's see here. Oh, shoot. We're getting close to the end here. We're getting close to the end here. I got to find our winner. I got to find our winner. So no, so the cutoff on the guesses happens right now, basically. If you're in this live, get your guess in right now. I'm going to have to go through and find our winner. But as a reminder, if you haven't joined the team, go to clonecoach.com. Got to buy one, get one 50% off special going on right now. Um, if you haven't checked out my YouTube channel, please do. Go check out the YouTube channel. I just uploaded a nurse, a farm tour, a hemp farm tour uh, today. It will be part one of a nice little series. And I'm going to start visiting and touring a lot more nurseries um, to bring you great, great footage there. So check out the YouTube and um, keep a lookout for the, the gel samples going out. The clone coach rooting gel trials happening and working together to bring a clone coach made for you guys. Once a pen, once again, it's going to be stronger, cheaper, and you know, better, better protecting the the product from con contamination. And it's brought to you by Clone Coach. So instead of you know repping and growing somebody else's brand, I will uh, continue to bring stuff for the team to grow the team and make the team better and grow that, grow that, grow our team before we grow somebody else's team. If you're if you're with that, then that's what that's what the Clone Coach team is about. That's what it's about here. You know, it's it's all good intentions. It's all communication and getting your results and and doing the best that we can for each other that's really the what's happening here so if you join the team come with that mindset if you don't have that mindset maybe the team's not for you but if you if you're ready to grow and make the best clones ever and you know strive for the best clones you put you could produce the most most efficient most consistent and you're part of this team this this community to help each other out um you know and create our own way then I'd love to have you, clonecoach.com. But let's see who's going to be our winner. Let's see who's going to be our winner. 
420 dude says, thanks for volleying questions and all the info, dude. Much appreciated. Appreciate you. And you're welcome. That's that's the strategy here. That's how you know it. That's how you should know it's no bullshit on this end. That's the strategy. I'm, I'm, the strategy is to give. Give and build a, a team and a community. Doing that first and the rest should work itself out. Let's see here. All right, we're going to find our winner. Let's go to random number generator. See, this one's a lot easier because it's only 1 through 420. So that's that's a pretty pretty good odds. Closest to the random number without going over. And I hope it's an easy one cuz Sometimes scrolling through the entire chat, <laughs> I get a little headache and stuff, looking at all those numbers, trying to not to, to miss a beat there. You guys ready? I see there might be a lag here, but Mount Baker Gardens looks like my last guess right here. Here we go. The random number is... That's it. Kadon Velasco, Mount Baker Gardens, no more. No more. No more guesses. No more guesses. There might be a lag, but still, no more guesses. No more guesses. Here we go. The, ra the random number is 314. 314. So I'm going to find out who got closest without going over. Kaden Velasco with the last minute entry got 302. Let's see who's going to beat him. Craft Cannabis Ohio, what's going on? How are you? We're doing the giveaway. Keep up. I got to scroll through all of the, the comments here and find our winner or winners who got closest without going over this random number, which is 314 for this episode 14 of Clone Questions Live. Let's get it. Let's see who's going to be our winner. Caden's got 303 so far. Who got closest to 314 without going over? 314 without Mount Baker got the 310. Mount Baker got the 310. Closest so far without going over to 314. Let's see here. 419. Nope. 140. Nope. 289. 333. Nope. Nope. 346. Nope. Sorry. 111. Not happening. Not this episode, but good guess. Thank you for playing. Let's see here. We do this every week, everybody. Every week. And we're trying to join, have people join the team here with a free copy of the Mother Plan SOP. Free copy. Get your Mother Plants. That's where it all starts with the Mother Plants. We got 327. No, you're over. 41. Not close this time. 373. 222. 301. Nope. 310 is in the lead right now. If I could be like, if I could talk like an auctioneer, that'd be really cool right now, huh? 411, 22, 420, 420, 420. Nope, 88, nope. 373, not happening. 314 is a random number. Oh, why did my computer go out over here? I'm recording. 314 is a random number. We got 310 so far in the lead. Closest without going over. 226, nope, nope. Going through the entire chat. 313. Ooh. Damn. Marker. Underscore Dylan. We got a new leader. You either get the same number or you get the exact number to win. But right now, Marker Dylan with a guess of 313 is closest to 314 without going over. 333. Nope. I'm looking for either 3, 3, 313 or 314. That's the only possible option to win right now because we have someone with a guess of 313. I love it. 313 or 314 are the, your, your only options to win. I'm scrolling, making my way through the entire chat from the bottom up to the very beginning of the live to check everybody's guesses. 323, 273, 215, 87, nope. 317, just over, sorry. 14, 418, 376, 118, 
323, another guess of 313, another guess of 313 from Cyclone Cannabis Co. Awesome, we got two winners so far, two people. Random numbers, 314. We got two people that guessed 313. 313 so far. Boom. Two winners. Two winners this episode. Two winners this episode. Marker Dillon and Cyclone Cannabis Co. Both guessing 313 with the random number being 314 for this episode of Clone Questions Live, episode 14. You both just won yourself a free Best Mother Plants Ever SOP from clonecoach.com. Welcome to the team. We're going to get your mothers in order. You're going to maximize your clones per square foot. Get your clones from a clone to a full production mother plant in the set 8 to 10 weeks and start producing clones at a consistent scale. Com- combine that with the Best Clones Ever SOP. You can do whatever you want with that nursery, man. But either way, you're going to be killing it. Welcome to the team. We got two winners. Now, Mr. Mister Bang Buds, not, you're, you're late. You're late there. That's why I cut off the chat and work my way up so I don't see the new ones after I've already announced it. You know, those new chats. Sorry, if there's a delay, that's live. What can we do? It's a live, it's a live chat here. So, uh, But we got two winners. Thank you for joining this episode of Clone Questions Live. I'm Paul, your clone coach. I'll see you next week. Have a good night, everybody. Stop.